So as promised, I'm going to do a series of videos on uh, herpetology. And um, what I plan to do is upload one maybe once a week, maybe once every couple weeks, and for each video to not be very long. So I won't talk about a whole lot in each video. But the three uh, goals that I have are to, one, talk about um, what, what do you have to do to become a herpetologist. Um, and uh, secondly, I want to talk about how do we actually do our work? What, is it, what does it look like on a day-to-day -day basis to study herpetology? And then um, three, I want to talk in these videos about the vital skills that you need if you're going to become a herpetologist. So in this video, I just want to talk about what a herpetologist is and talk about how I uh, started out on this journey to become one. Um, and then just sort of give an overview of the kind of skill set that you need to, 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 to study reptiles and amphibians. So a herpetologist is uh, different from a herpeticulturist. So most people that watch these videos that I put up are, are doing herpeticulture. And so those are people that keep animals, maybe as pets or as display animals. Um, and they uh, breed them and, and take care of them and you go to reptile shows and things like that. Even if somebody's doing that as a profession, even if somebody is breeding and keeping these animals as a full-time job, that person is not a herpetologist. That's a herpeticulturist and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that the skills that uh, the herpetocultural community has are vital um, because those it's usually in that realm where we learn a lot about how to take care of these animals and, and that comes in handy particularly for species that are of conservation concern um, but it's not the same thing as being a herpetologist being a herpetologist is being a scientist and it means that you study reptiles and amphibians in a disciplined way um, and the goal is not to turn a profit from, from selling animals. The goal is to learn about these animals, about their natural history, about their evolutionary history, um, about the things we need to do to conserve them and make sure that populations main, are, are maintained through time and stay healthy. And usually herpetologists have uh, one of, of several kinds of jobs. A, a lot of times you work at a university uh, as a professor and you might teach and also do research. Um, you could be a curator at a museum or at the herpetarium in a, uh, in a zoo. Uh, a herpetologist could also work for the federal government or for a state department to sort of help monitor populations and, and uh, help make sure that threatened species are, are taken care of and, and conserved. Um, and so my journey uh, to become a herpetologist started out like, like a lot of people. When I was um, a little boy, I used to go to my grandmother's house and um, I would uh, get there and she always would have these little glass jars for me that she would keep under the sink and she would give me one and I would run outside and I would catch fence lizards and I would catch uh, little baby turtles and I would catch toads and tree frogs and on one occasion I remember I, I caught uh, I think it was 13 tree frogs, green tree frogs and I brought them back home and I put them in a tank in my in my room and kept them for a week or two until my mom told me I had to get rid of them um, and then I took them out and let them go, and I think there were only like nine or ten, so a few of them got lost in the house. And that's not the last time uh, wild animals got loose in my house. But um, that's sort of where a lot of us start. And then um, at, when I got older, like into high school, I started keeping uh, reptiles as pets. So here's one of my favorites. And uh, a lot of people may think this is boring, but it's uh, leopard gecko. That was uh, the first animals that I started to breed. And this is a nice uh, tangerine male and so he, he's not what you call a wild type. He, this is not the way these geckos look in the wild. It's the result of generations of selective breeding. Um, but uh, this guy is one of my favorites. Um, and I started keeping him and, and doing a lot of herpeticulture. And then uh, that continued as I went into college. And uh, when I went to the university I studied biology but I also studied writing. I, I double majored in writing and biology and um, as you'll learn in some of these videos I think that the skills that I learned in my curriculum in the English department have actually come in more handy than things that I learned in the biology department um, to, to, to be a scientist. Um, and so that's, uh, well, then after that I worked in a factory for a couple years. Um, and then I taught high school for uh, five years. And um, then I started my Ph.D. three and a half years ago, I think. Yeah, three and a half years ago. Um, and so, uh, so the first thing I'll say is that the difference between something being a hobby and a profession 
is discipline. And so when I was younger and I just kept these, these cool little animals, that's not a very disciplined way to be because at any point, hey, you, you've got these cool little lizards or whatever, hey, you can get rid of them, you can sell them all, you can completely uh, get out of the hobby. Um, it's not a profession. And so uh, becoming a herpetologist is. Um, so the last thing that I want to talk about in this introductory video is there's three vital skills that you need um, to become a scientist and to essentially become a herpetologist, which, which is a scientist. Um, and they're not what you would think. Um, those vital skills are not being passionate about reptiles and amphibians. Um, that comes in handy, and that's, that's helpful, um, but that's not one of the vital skills. Um, another one is not having experience keeping and breeding animals. Um, that's not one of the vital skills. Uh, and a lot of people feel like that, oh, I really like these animals, I really think they're neat, I've read a few books about them, um, and that sort of qualifies me to, to work in a lab or, or to start my master's degree or a PhD or something like that. Um, the, and it really doesn't. And, and the reason why is I think about my daughter who's six years old, she does all those things. She thinks that these animals are really cool. She can take care of them. She can feed them. She can clean up their poop. Um, she's not ready to be a professional scientist. And so the three things that you're going to have to be able to do to become a herpetologist are you've got to learn how to read well. You've got to learn how to write well. And you've got to learn how to do math well. And for those of you that are in high school or college and you want to study biology as a profession, um, it's great to take biology classes and learn about natural history and learn about evolutionary history and the history of science and all of that. But the three essential skills that you need to be a scientist are reading, writing, and math. And I'm going to do a separate video on each one of those things and show you um, what is a day in the life of a herpetologist like. And wh what you'll see through these videos is most of the stuff that I do is not taking care of these guys. Most of the stuff that I do is reading peer-reviewed literature, science, scientific literature, writing, and I spend a ton of time doing math and statistical computing. Um, and uh, coding is really what it is. Um, so uh, that's sort of my introductory video. And I'm going to make one video about each of those three skills. And then I'm also going to uh, take you into the lab at some point and sort of show you some of the things we do. Um, but I want this to be kind of interactive, so if you've got questions that, that you have about what it's like to be a scientist, what it's like to be a herpetologist, um, you can put those in the comments, and I'll, I'll try to address those questions as best I can. Um, but, yeah, so... This guy's so cool. Anyways... Um, yeah, great. And then also, uh, you know, I'll be making these videos about once a week, so it'll, it'll help you to keep up with things if you subscribe, if you're not already subscribed. So, great. Thank you.